Guys, guess what today is? It's one of my favorite days. We have logarithm day today. Woohoo. You're excited. You just don't know it yet. All right. I want to start by walking us through things we already know and, and lead us down a new and unusual path. Two squared. Please tell me you know this. Two squared is four. I didn't hear you though. Two cubed. All right. Two cubed. That one's eight. We know that one as well. So my question then is this. If I have two to some power and I don't know what that power is, what would that be if I wanted it to equal six? Two squared is four, two cubed is eight. What must it be to equal six? I want you to actually think of a number. Think of a number right now. Turn to the people around you and tell me what number you're thinking might be the exponent that would, we would put on a two to turn it into a six. Go. How many of you guessed 2.5? It's logical. Six is halfway between four and eight. 2.5 is halfway between two and three. Pick up your calculator. Type it in. What do you get? Two to the, use the caret, 2.5 power. Do we get six? Two. You were wrong. That didn't work. Why didn't that work? Here's the thing. Our brains are so programmed with linear programming that it's very difficult for us to break out of that mold. So if you're thinking it's two and a half because it's right smack dab between six and eight, that would be great if we had a constant rate of change, if we had a nice even slope, which we don't. This is not anything like that. This is exponential, so it behaves differently. So what is the exponent? I don't know. I can't remember right now. Maybe we'll figure out something later that can help us. We'll find out. All right, here's the thing. We had this conundrum, look it up. We had this conundrum and we're trying to figure out how can we find out these exponents that are not regular numbers that are, are weird and unusual and misshapen. Everything has an operation to undo it. Addition, subtraction, subtraction will undo addition. We've been talking about inverses. We just finished them in the last lesson. Multiplication and division will undo each other. What? will undo exponential. Because see, here's the thing, it's not the same as power function. If I have a square, I can undo that with a square root. If I have a cube, I can undo that with a cube root. How do I undo an exponent where I don't even know what it is? Hence, the birth of logarithms. Ladies and gentlemen, they are the inverse functions for exponential functions. This is the one thing that will undo an exponential function. All right, so what do you need to know? <laughs> the purpose of logarithms. The entire purpose of logarithms, we need to be able to find unknown exponents. And this is the only way to undo exponential form. Please make sure that you have that. Most people forget what the purpose of logarithms is. So star, nice happiness right there, all right? We need to be able to know logarithms will find us the exponents that we don't yet have. This is one of those functions that doesn't always work real well with people. I know the first time that I learned this, I can't even really use the word learned. I never understood it. I didn't know what to do with it. And lo and behold, I moved to Michigan and said, huh, I should teach. So I needed to patch, pass, the pass the Michigan math test and I knew logarithms were gonna be on this thing. So I had to reteach myself from scratch. And to do that, I changed a couple of the variables in order to make it something that would mean something to me so that I could actually understand that. So of course, I'm going to share that with you. All right, I'm about to introduce you to the Dave, the Doyle Adapted Version Experience. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I've been throwing little things in at the, the school year at you that are all of my Daves, things that I've written for myself. This is the first official Dave that we have here, all right? So what you're gonna see here is not in any book. And if you repeat it out loud in front of other humans that have not had me for a teacher, they will laugh at you. But the good news is that you can actually have the last laugh because you will understand while they are still drooling over their homework. So here we go. Log. Base. Answer. Power. Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce you to Logbath? All right, Logbath, know it, love it, decorate it, all right? Again, party zone, party zone, you need this, all right? This is gonna make your life a lot less miserable, I promise. All right, there we go, Logbath. The variables I changed completely because this way they actually mean something to you. All right, so check this out. B is a base, we know what bases do. P is a power, so we know that if I have a base and a power, we understand the relationship between how those two things fit with each other. So if I have a base to a power, what does that equal? That equals my answer. So simply by saying log bath, I can see the relationship of all the different pieces to each other in a way that makes sense to previous knowledge that we have. So just to show you with numbers so that you can see how this works, if I have something, again, that we are comfortable with, 2 to the third equals 8, all right? So 2 is my base, 3 is my power, and if I put 2 to the third power, the answer that I get is 8. So as a logarithm, it's going to look something like this. Log base 2. Now please notice, all right, the 2 here as the original base is the big number with the superscript. In this case, the base becomes the subscript to the log, right? It's a small 2, it's a little bit lower than log, it's sitting lower on the line. Base answer. So this is asking, if I have a 2 and I want it to equal 8, what exponent should I put on the 2 to give me an answer of 8? How about a 3? Ta-da! In the event that you doubt me, look at your calculator carefully. You should see a log button. I think it's over on the left someplace, yes? When you get home tonight, say thank you to your parents, all right? This calculator is one of the first ones where you can use any base number you want and it will calculate automatically for you. It used to be that calculators only did base 10. And so right now, if you wanna to check to see if I'm right, you can hit your log button. You can type in the two as the subscript for your base and put in the eight and it'll provide you with three. Again, with the entire point of this being, we want to be able to find unknown exponents and that's what this does. This gives us the power that we are looking for, all right? So these are the two forms. We have exponential form and we have logarithmic form. And I do need you guys to be able to go back and forth between those. So we're gonna practice with that in a moment. But there's one more thing I'd like to show you first. Um, all right, ready? You're, you're gonna guess what this is. Dun, dun, dun. Guesses? No? Okay. How about now? What do you think it is? Who said road? not a road. Go back farther in your life. Say kindergarten, first grade, right about the time where you were learning handwriting. Ladies and gentlemen, I do this every year because I need you to understand the location of where all of these variables and numbers are going to be sitting because if you put them in the wrong place, it means something different. So my mother was a kindergarten teacher. She would be very proud of me right now. I'm going to write this very carefully. L O G Okay, so technically the G didn't quite touch the line. Don't tell my mom. Notice where I'm going to put the 2. I'm going to use the log base 2 of 8. 2 is that tiny number. It's that subscript. It needs to sit below the regular line that we write things on. The 8, by comparison, is full size. All right, the 8 sits right on the line, full size with everything else, equals, and notice the 3 is gonna be the same way, all right? Despite the fact that in exponential form, three is the exponent and tiny, in this case, it's not. Three is normal, sitting again on that flat line. And so every time you write this, you need to keep this in mind. What I see too often is people end up confusing themselves because they put the two as the base and then they start letting the eight float up a little bit, pretending that the eight is the exponent for the two. And I'm telling you right now, that eight, that is not the exponent for the two. Remember the eight is the answer that we are trying to achieve 
and then three is the exponent that will help with that happen. Notice how I've read that as well, log base two of eight equals three. Some of you are not listening right now. Log base two of eight equals three. You will learn to read that correctly and I will keep reminding you and fixing you until you do because I would like you to sound as intelligent as you are. So say this with me, ready? We're gonna read it one more time, here we go. Log base two of eight equals three. There we go, very good, very good. I almost heard you that time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm gonna get you a couple problems and have you try going back and forth, changing forms. And so just give me a second. All right, I promised you an answer from earlier. Two to what power is gonna make six? Again, this idea that logarithmic form is the inverse of exponential, this will help us figure it out. So two to be question mark equals six, we'll take the base and put it in the base spot, so log base two. The answer is supposed to be six, so that goes there. So the question is, what is the power? What will happen? Put that in the calculator. Log base two of six, what do you get? You guys are slow, come on, what do you get? Half. 2.58. So if you guessed 2.5, you really weren't that far off. But again, because it's exponential and not linear, it's a little bit different. So you can see how this works. You can see how we can find our mysterious exponents using logarithms. Right. We're going to do a little bit of practice going back and forth. And so we'd like you to take the following things and put them into logarithmic form. So right now, in exponential form, 3 squared is equal to 9. I think we can agree with that statement. Um, we're also going to go with 5 to the negative third power equals 1 over 125. Guys, that better make sense. Why is it a fraction? Oh yeah, the exponent's a negative, and what's five cubed? 125, all right, so these are two statements that we know they are correct statements. I'd like you right now to take these, write them into logarithmic form, and I will get back to you. So please pause, try it right now, and then we'll check your answers, okay? Go. Okay, how did you do? Take a look at it. All right, so remember, it's log bap, log bap. Put that in your brain because it'll, okay, it's snappy, it'll catch, it'll stick there for a while. The base on this one is three, so log base three. Did you say that right? Log base three of nine, all right, so nine is our answer, equals two, two is the power. Now, I want you to look at your paper, and I want you to look at your neighbor's paper. Historically, somebody in this room has a nine that is floating a little bit too high. Your nine is sitting above the line instead of on the line. Please remember the nine is not an exponent. The nine is the number that we've got sitting there. It's the answer in our logarithmic process. So I'd like you to police yourselves. Again, take a look at your paper, look at your neighbors. If you see anybody that has a nine that's floating, you look at them and you say, why is your nine floating? Because if I was there, that's what I would say. Why is your nine floating? Take a look at it, all right? The other one, again, log base five. Are you saying it correctly? log base five of one over 125. Notice I use the parentheses there. I guess technically I would not have to, but if I've got a jumbled mess of things that I'm taking the log of all of them, usually parentheses really helps with that process. So log base five of one over 125 in the parentheses, and again equals negative three, log bat. Base answer power, base answer power every single time. That's log bat, all right? Now we're gonna try some where we switch them the other way. Give me a second. All right, so we tried it one way, let's try it the other way. We currently have two things that are in logarithmic form. So log base four of four equals one, and then log base 49 of seven equals one half. I would like you to take a moment and write those into exponential form. When you're done, the statements need to make sense. Otherwise, you really did something wrong. All right, I want you to try this right now, go. Okay, how did you do? Four to the first power equals four. That does make a ton of sense, right? Again, the base was four, the answer was four. One has to be the exponent. It's the only number that's gonna work if you have a base of four and you would like your answer to be four. The second one brings us back to last week, guys. 49 to the one half power. Do you remember what that is? You really should remember what that is. We're talking the base is 49. I want that number to get smaller because I want the answer to be seven, but I don't want a fraction, so I don't want a negative exponent. What's the one half? You better remember. We're talking power over root. That's a square root, guys. So again, this makes total sense. The square root of 49 is seven. 
had to do. All right, so these are some good, good skills to have. Okay, at this point in time, this is a, a long lesson. There's a lot that I would like to soak in your brain overnight. So we are going to pause there and come back tomorrow to pick up the rest of this lesson. So two things for you. One, you don't have any practice tonight, so you can all cheer. And second, if you have enjoyed this video series at all, I want you to go two doors down and see Mrs. Blake because she's doing a phenomenal job videotaping all of this. Thank you.